Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cannabis Investment Summit World, wherever you are. Welcome to our presentation on regulatory changes on the import and export of cannabis products uh, from Thailand. My name is Paul Crozio. I'm a practicing lawyer. I've been in Thailand now for 30 years, and uh, we manage some of uh, the most so the first thing we need to do is understand the cannabis and hemp regulations in Thailand. The issue with the cannabis and re regulations is there's a lot of talk about the regulations, but at the end of the day, these regulations are, are still in process. The government has put forward a number of mandates in terms of the regulations that would encourage the production, the extraction, and the use of cannabis and cannabis-related products in Thailand. Those regulations, though, are clearly in the formative stages. There was a lot of talk about them being promulgated this year, but because of various other issues that the government's facing at the moment, that's probably been delayed until the first quarter or the second quarter of next year. However, so when we're looking at understanding the existing cannabis and hemp regulations in Thailand, we need to understand some of the background to the regulatory issues in the country. Cannabis itself was heavily prescribed through various protocols. In particular, the possession of cannabis is treated in pretty much the same way as a possession of one of the class one drugs, such as an opiates, etc. So it's being implemented in a fairly draconian fashion up until recently. The Black market, the grey market in cannabis, however, is a market that has, has been fairly uh, widely known in Southeast Asia, but one that the government is acutely aware of that it needs to be controlled as it opens up cannabis production growth in Thailand. The existing regulatory framework, therefore, allows at the... So the first thing, of course, is the classic distinction between cannabis and hemp and Thailand's followed mostly the international standards of defining cannabis in the medical sense as having a low THC content and hemp being a negligible THC and CBD content. The way the government's ensuring that this continues to be the practice is that they are undertaking research into and clarification of the genotypes that they'll allow to be produced within Thailand um, as the industry expands. The, currently, the research being carried out in the northern universities is narrowing down from... Okay, so we, we look at the distinguishing marks between cannabis and hemp in Thailand, and we see that Thailand has followed the international conventions of defining cannabis, medical cannabis, as being a plant with low, low THC, with CBD being on the high levels. And that distinguishes cannabis from hemp, which generally doesn't possess either a significant CBD or THC content. <clears throat> the way Thailand's going to police this in the future is the restriction of the genotypes that they're allowing to be grown in Thailand. As they've done with the hemp plant, the industrial hemp plant, they're going to perfect a number of genotypes, no more than four, that will be allowable. Those particular, that particular breeding cycle is now being undertaken in the northern universities from about 100 plant stock that have been imported and grown in Thailand. After they've finished the production cycle and they've done their scientific research, then future growth in Thailand will be limited to those four particular species or subspecies. So let's move on to the myths and the rumours. So is this a free-for-all for people to enter Thailand? Well, not exactly. The Thai government is encouraging the production of CBD and CBD-related products, and let's exclude THC, the recreational side, but for CBD for medical purposes, for research purposes, are being encouraged in Thailand. The particular legislation, however, is heavily weighted towards Thai participation in the industry so that you'll see that many of the statements of ownership refer to directorship, ownership being predominantly Thai, 66% uh, owned by uh, Thai, uh, Thai citizens. 
The, the other part of it is that we, we hear a lot of talk about CBD for export and CBD for medical purposes. CBD for export will probably be limited in the short term to those with significantly lower CBD or THC content than would be considered to be therapeutic. So we're looking at exports in the market in predominantly cosmetics um, and, and other um, means, uh, waters, gums or whatever, but at very low levels. The other one rumour that's being popular in the press is from a, a political party some time ago that talked about allowing Thai people to grow six plants in their home and whether that would lead to the liberalisation of uh, the cannabis industry in Thailand. Well, that's been heard, seen, and definitely it's not one that's been popularised within the media uh, for some time, even though it resurfaces time to time. There's no legislation to indicate that that will be allowable in the near future. So moving on, um, we hear a lot of ambitions for the future. And the ambitions for the future revolve around reviving, in particular past the pandemic, reviving Thailand as a tourism destination. So what does it mean for cam cannabis and, and also for the export industry? Well, firstly for the tourism we mentioned before the medical uses of cannabis. The preference at this stage and the legislation revolves around the use of cannabis in the medical setting in Thailand and freeing up the ability of practitioners, both of Western and traditional medicine, to prescribe cannabis and cannabis-derived products when necessary and allowing the people who are residing in Thailand, whether tourists or, or expatriates, um, to consume these, this medication with a certain amount of freedom. The ambitions to expand within Southeast Asia and internationally are somewhat limited by the fact that the UN conventions still heavily control the export and import of cannabis-derived products. Predominantly, it allows medical and government and research use of cannabis and cannabis-derived products but it does prescribe the free market of these products internationally. So at least for the near term, the emphasis of the government and the direction is to improve the draw of Thailand as a medical tourism destination and the legislation is heavily around that. The use of um, cannabis also has been expanded somewhat to that of use in cosmetics where it is becoming less and less regulated and also the use in veterinary products as well, which is becoming less and less regulated. So we're seeing that the non-human use uh, through veterinary is becoming a popular area for expansion in the country. So we've covered most of the regulations for the import-export of cannabis and hemp, but we are going to see some, some further developments. It's an open secret that the UN has had many heated debates about liberalising the so let's uh, look at some of the key takeaways from the regulations. So for the export of uh, cannabis products, there's obviously some uh, moves to open the, that industry up, provided that the UN conventions are relaxed as well, so that there is a movement within the government to allow the export of cannabis-derived products uh, and the participation of the private sector. The import of cannabis-derived products, however, is still rather regulated and it's unlikely those regulations will change within the next three to four years. So we are required to partner with an approved organisation if the intention is to import CBD-related products. And again, there's a very narrow band uh, of which uh, you can import products for. Uh, again, research being predominant, medical research being at the forefront. So that's... Um, that's, that's pretty much where the state is. Is exporting of hemp and cannabis viable? I mean, this is, um, at the moment, an industry where there is a tremendous amount of demand for cannabis-derived product within Southeast Asia and, and indeed internationally. But it's a market that, that is very much being saturated by exports, whether legal or illegal, from 
America, both North, and North America predominantly and Canada. So the takeaways are that if you are focusing on cannabis as an entry to some other added value activities, whether that be in medical tourism or in some of the other related areas, then I think it is a, it's a viable product. But if you're relying on the export of hemp or cannabis, then there are other countries with significant advantages and who also have a significantly more liberal policy towards the exports. The, the other issue is that there's still a lack of bilateralism in the changes in Southeast Asia or in Asia generally, and that, that whilst Thailand's at the forefront of the liberalisation of the industry, that hasn't been reciprocated in other countries, so that the exports into bordering countries is still heavily regulated. And finally, the focus uh, being predominantly on the medical use, there are a number of regulatory restrictions on medical practice in Thailand, the establishment of medical clinics, both Western and traditional, that do mean that the production or export or import of hemp and cannabis is still going to be heavily weighted towards uh, a domestic participation. So, so finally, is it worthwhile? I think it is. I think that those people who are in Thailand at the moment and who are developing relationships with the, the government, hospitals and others in the industry will benefit from liberalisation as it occurs over the next three or four years. Those who are wanting to enter the country at the moment will need to establish a partnership with those who are far more advanced in the field. And that will, of course, have a monetary cost as well as a time cost. So for those who are here in Thailand, congratulations. I think the path forward is starting to get clearer. For those who are coming for to Thailand for uh, developing the cannabis industry, then there are some hurdles, but it's not impossible at this stage. Thank you. And uh, I think at some point we will have questions. So thank you. <laughs>